Here in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at creating some forms here in Revit. We're going to take a look at also creating a couple different materials that we'll need in order to use to represent each one of these programmatic areas per se in our building as we're laying out this diagram here. I think that Revit offers us some options. So we're going to get right to exploring it. The first thing we're going to do, let's open up our new conceptual mass. And by default, Revit only provides one family template to work from here, unless you've created others. So we're going to open that. And now it's going to bring us into our conceptual masking environment that we've explored in some other videos. So the first thing I want us to do is actually we want to create some other paint options here in Revit. So we're going to come up to our Manage tab. And we're going to click on Materials. We need to start to look into Materials a little bit more closely. And the first thing I want us to look at, if I come down and click on Miscellaneous, you'll see by default in the Family Editor, there's very few materials that are provided in the document, keeping that template size as small as possible. But the next thing we want to do, we want to add some paint materials. So the first thing I want us to do is just come down to Miscellaneous. And you'll see on the list, if I just kind of scroll down, you'll see that by default we only have one paint. So I'm just going to click on that and we're going to add that into our project over here. You'll see why I'll add that in. We have one paint type in our project, which is still a gray paint that looks like the chipboard look of many other materials. So the first thing I want us to do is we're actually going to go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to right click again on that new paint type and I'm going to rename it and let's just put a, uh, a color in parentheses. We're going to give this a red paint and then I'm just going to click one time to complete the renaming there. Now the next piece that we want to do, if you look over here in the family editor that works alongside of this material browser, the second piece we need to actually click on appearance here. So I'm going to select on that. And for appearance, we want to go ahead and find some of the color. We're going to expand our appearance library. And you'll see paint is actually in here. You'll see metallic paint as well. So if I click on that, you'll see several of these assets that have been predefined for us as well. So there's plenty paint colors to choose from here, but we want to make sure we pick one. Um, so we can go with e either one will work for, for what we're doing here. So we have metallic paint. There's a paint section. I don't see very much here. And then we have a wall paint. And I do see quite a bit in this section as well. We're going to have our glossy and our matte subdivided in that wall paint category. So I'm just going to come down and find myself a red paint. And you'll see in the category I can pay attention if I'm looking for a matted or a glossy type. I can select on that here and you'll see it'll take effect in my material editor. So now we've assigned an asset here. This is very important because now we've created a paint type that's different. If I don't make sure that we go into the asset browser, you'll see that you'll run into many errors. I've kind of read some comments in some blogs. People are having some problems in specifying different paint colors. So the next thing I would do is we come back and we're going to deal back with our family editor menu once again. So I, I, next thing I want to do is just come back up to the graphics, select on that, and make sure that we check our use rendered appearance. This is important if we want to see in just shaded mode. I'm not sure why this isn't by default already checked for us, but what this does is it allows us to see the colors that we've picked for the materials in just shaded mode. We don't have to wait until we've rendered a particular view to be able to see how um, the rendered appearance is going to look we can see it in shaded view. So I'm going to click done for that. And I can continue to duplicate that and I'm going to create a couple other colors as we move into a diagramming exercises that I wanted us to to do with our massing. So I'm just going to duplicate this one more time. I'm going to click on my duplicated one, click over here to edit to bring up my material editor. I'm going to click on the appearance to bring up our asset browser and then I'm going to select if this is going to be a blue we can go ahead and select some sort of blue here so I'm going to just come up here and pick a cyan color and assign that 
to this color here. Um, let's go ahead and close the asset browser now that it's taken effect. Next thing we want to do is come back to graphics. We see it's already checked based on the material that we started from. And whether it's here or I rename it elsewhere, I'm going to rename this blue. And we can click done for that. And I'm just going to click apply there. And so now we've started here and you see we have two and we can create as many others as we need. So we, we can repeat process as much as possible. And this is where I do recommend after we create a few more of these, the next thing I would recommend is that you begin to consider building your own massing template that has many of the typical materials that you use already pre-built in. That's where you begin to capitalize on the, the value that Revit can provide. Otherwise, this paint building process can be time consuming every time you're ready to do another diagram or work on another conceptual massing here in Revit. I'm going to edit. I'm just going to give myself one more color to use. Clicking on my appearance one more time. Let's click on our green. We're going to use that. Close the asset browser. Make sure that it's renamed here. And once again, we can change the name up here or over here on the menu. We could just rename it over here as well. However you want to go about that. Now we have a green cut paint color as well. So let's click OK for that. If you have found the demonstration here today on the Smarter Architect YouTube channel to be helpful for you, please subscribe. It takes a second and I would greatly appreciate it.